Yo, what up? Now, this is nothing, no review or nothing like that, so don't get it twisted. This is just something I was sitting here, you know, smoking and thinking about. When you look at both albums, and y'all remember my logic, Under Pressure Review, if you don't, I tweeted the link to it, go check it out. And I feel the debut album is the same as, you know, the new album. To me, it's 10 out of 10. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, I couldn't find one flaw in it. You know, and so what I wanted to do is compare songs, production, song, meaning content, flow, and originality on both projects, song for song, and let you guys decide which album you think is the dopest album. And if you had a chance, would you rather have the, the new album come out first and then under pressure? So this is just some shit I'm high just thinking about. But anyway, what we gonna do, we gonna add Under Pressure, the bonus track, so it'll be the deluxe, this is not called deluxe, we just gonna add the 15 records, and then on Incredible True Story, we gonna take out the skits. So it's basically 15 songs on Under Pressure, and it's 14 songs on a new album, to make it even. You feel what I'm saying? So, let's start it off like this. You got the intro from Under Pressure, and you got Contact from the new album. Out of those two records, you go ahead and think which one you know, it's better. Going into Soul Food versus Fade Away. Very interesting. I was looking at that like, damn. And mind you, I listened to both albums back to back before I wrote all this shit out. And it's a, t it's a very tough decision. You know what I'm saying? But I would have to give it to Fade Away far as Soul Food. Even though the subject matter on Soul Food is a little bit different from the subject matter on Fade Away. Now getting into track three, I'm gone from Under Pressure and Upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm gone, beats that out. Hands down. Now, we get into track four, which will be gang related versus like, whoa. If you go subject matter wise because of the things he talked about, or do you go with the more boom bap sound that's the mixtape sound that most people are talking about more enjoyable? I'm going to go ahead and go with like, whoa, because it's more enjoyable. Now, we get into track five. Buried Alive versus Young Jesus. Me being me was, you know, enjoyable to me. Yeah, I'm going to go with Buried Alive on that. Because Young Jesus is a dope record, but I still feel like it reminds me of the mixtape days. Right? Now, we get into track six. Bounce. Versus Intermission featuring Lucy Rose. Both of those songs are kind of, you know, iffy. Like, not bad. They're good. But on the tip of, like, listening, I'm like, okay, the edge goes to Intermission because of the hook. So I, that's what I'm going with. Now, this is where it gets complicated. Track 7 will be Growing Pains versus I'm the Greatest. You see, he finished the trilogy off with Growing Pains, and we got I'm the Greatest. Now, me, I'm going with I'm the Greatest. Not because it's new, just because when I heard it in that trailer, I knew that that song was going to be a goddamn problem, and that it was. So that's me being me. You know what I mean? But y'all go ahead and pick between which songs you think is, you know, doper. Going into track eight, it'd be Never Enough versus Laura Willing. Hmm. Interesting track, right? You know what I mean? Those two... From a year ago. I have to go with Never Enough. Because I just like the vibe and the melody of it. You know I thought it was a, a very solid song. Not saying Lord Willing is not a bad song. You know but I just have to go with that track. Going into track 9. Which be Metropolis versus City of Stars. Hands down City of Stars. Just based off it reminded me of Flashing Lights. You know you definitely could tell he's talking about. What he's talking about. And the production which is on point. Here gets the confusing part. Number 10, it'd be Nikki versus Stainless. Me, I'm going with Nikki, hands down. I don't care what nobody say. To me, that was a creative way listening to the record, and then you get to the end and figure out, okay, wow, he's just talking about a cigarette. That's dope. Some people out there smoke cigarettes. You get it. The ones who don't, y'all don't like it anyway, so we moving on. Track 11 will be Under Pressure versus Paradise. Ooh. I'm going to have to go with Under Pressure on that one. Not because it's based off the title, but just based off it. that song just had so much chemistry on it. It was too goddamn dope not to pass up on it, you know? 
Moving on to track 12. To the end versus never been. That's where it get tricky. To the end is my favorite shit. It ended the album well in the standard edition, but never been, you know, that's kind of, damn, it's a good record too. We can call that a tie. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, fuck it. It is what it is. Moving on to track 13, we got Driving Miss Daisy featuring Childish Gambino versus Run It. No contest. It easily go to Run It. Now, at this point, we got two songs left on Under Pressure, and we got one left on The Incredible True Story. You got Now and All Right versus The Incredible True Story, track 14. I'm going to have to say The Incredible True Story, hands down, is better than Now and All Right put together. But that's just what I picked. So if you look at the um, context of the songs that I fuck with, you know, and even taking it back to the intro to the intro on the new album, I'm going to have to say the intro on the debut album because it was an actual song. You dig what I'm saying? And the new album kind of has an intro to where it's setting it up for everything else to go into, like, the story mode of the movie. So with that being said, let's count them out and see which album that I kind of enjoy more. We got one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven joints off under pressure. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight joints off the incredible true story. So therefore, in my opinion, song wise, the new album is kinda better to me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I still feel under pressure is an incredible album. I listened to it and I was like, damn, this shit is hard to, you know, actually top and figure out which is the better album. But at the same time, this new album, he has more freedom to do what he wanted to do because if you understand why he did, like, the Galactic-type, you know, um, album, you have to go listen to interviews. I know why he did it, but a lot of you don't, you know, know why he did it because if you did, you would be saying it in your reviews. That's why I'm not reviewing it yet. I'm just toying around and shit like that. But definitely, man, I feel like this album... He surpassed what he did with the first joint, you know what I mean? And on this one, he gave you himself. So if anybody throws shade at him or this project, then to me, they're not real. Because how can you hate somebody that's really being themselves and really being true to themselves? You see what I'm saying? But that's just my pick, you know, for the songs that I like. What's you uh list from, you know, Under Pressure to the Incredible True Story, if you're a Logic fan? And shout out to Dead End Hip Hop, you know what I mean? They actually, like tweeted me and um a fellow uh youtuber that was we was chatting about the album and shit like that but that's beyond the point niggas didn't even say anything back so whatever that but this is some fun shit i was doing this is a random ass blog you know what i mean hope you enjoyed it look at the background that's that good uh what my girl said it was cherry kush so yeah i'm about to light up and hope y'all enjoy this this album review will drop on the 15th like i said Later on in the day, Friday the 13th, Nas dropping. I mean, you know, it was written, you know, the review for that. So stay tuned for that. And, yeah, man, I'll try to do something different for y'all. One.